All right, we finally made it to the last task in step one, and this is task 1-3, which is information system registration. So up to this point, we've categorized the information types. We've categorized the information system itself. We've started working on the SSP based on the documentation and information we have available. Now it's time to register the system with the organization. This task, like all tasks in step one, aligns the categorized step of the RMF with the initiation step of the SDLC. The primary role responsible for this task is the information system owner. The information system owner is supported by the information system security officer. At this point, you may be wondering why to even bother registering an information system. There are a number of reasons why we register systems, and this includes ensuring that the system's development follows the organization's program management process and system development lifecycle. It ensures that program management and project management resources are correctly allocated. It ensures that security controls are implemented correctly and that security resources are correctly allocated. It also ensures that organizational resources are being allocated on the correct systems. And finally, it reduces organizational expenses by reducing or eliminating the use of duplicate systems. When we register an information system, we identify the system and any subsystems, whether dynamic or static, that that system may contain. We establish a relationship between the information system and a, the organization that owns, manages, or controls the information system and we inform the organization of the existence of the information system, the characteristics of the information system, and the security implications of implementing the information system. When we register an information system with the Program Management Office, or PMO, the PMO can assign resources, including project managers, or PMs. PMs will ensure that the system is developed in compliance with the organization's SDLC, or System Development Lifecycle. The PM will also ensure that the system stays on track by meeting milestones and system requirements. The registration of a system is a check and balance to make sure that this happens and that program management resources are allocated correctly. The PMO will also ensure that the system has been processed through the organization's security department or security processes to ensure the correct security professionals are assigned. The PM will ensure that the security professionals advise the program and the information system owner on secure development of the information system. The PM will also ensure that the security professional builds the security control requirements into the project plan. The fact is that not all information systems support the organizational mission equally. The PMO will ensure that all systems are categorized and ranked in order of organizational importance. This is normally based on the importance of that information system supporting the organizational mission. The PMO will use this ranking to then allocate resources in order of the organizational priority. Building and maintaining duplicate systems that accomplish the same mission, often with the same hardware and software, normally costs organizations a lot of money. The PMO will ensure that systems being considered for development do not duplicate systems that are already in development or have already been built. If the organization owns or manages an information system that can accomplish the same mission of the system being registered, the PMO will direct the system owner and the information owner to validate that the existing system cannot be used. The PMO will also validate that there is not a system under development that will accomplish the same mission as the system being registered. A overly simplistic example of a registration form is one 
that's being presented by the fictitious Department of Social Media. This simple form has two halves. The top half is completed by the system owner and the bottom half is completed by the PMO. In the top half of the form, the system owner identifies the system name, the system acronym, the department the system will support, the system owner, and describe the system including the system's categorization. The bottom half of the form will be completed by the PMO and returned to the system owner. The PMO will complete the form by assigning a registration number, an assignment date, determining if the system belongs in a PMO portfolio, if needed, assign a project manager, and note any special circumstances from the PMO office. And that's all there is to it. At this point, you've completed Task 1-3, Register the Information System, of the Risk Management Framework. You should have an understanding of this task's alignment to the system development lifecycle, who is responsible for this task, the importance of registering the information system, and have a high-level overview of the registration process. This presentation is part of the Cyber Recon RMF Lab. In addition to these videos, the lab uses multimodal instruction to drive home the RMF process through the use of videos, learning games, practice quizzes, weekly instructor interaction, an updated RMF book, an updated RMF lab guide, and hands-on experience in a simulated live environment where you practice the techniques you're learning. For a limited time, we're allowing full access to all of the resources available in Step 1 of the Cyber Recon RMF Lab. Click the tile on the right to understand more about the RMF Lab and see how you can gain access to Step 1.